Hi friends, how's it going? This is the number one question I've been getting lately, and uh, I've been I've been thinking I need to make a video about this. I've been getting emails, comments, questions constantly. Tim hey man, what's the deal with the 590? So you guys want to know? I'm gonna tell you today. I'm gonna this will be. Uh, I'm gonna try and keep this video as brief as possible, okay? Here it is right here, it's dirty, I got the holes plugged. I've been really diving in and, and, and trying to wrap my head around what's going on with this saw, okay? Um, this is my buddy Caleb's saw, Caleb and Taylor. Uh, C Caleb runs a tree service out of Houston. Uh, he's a buddy of mine. He owns that 440 that we built, if you go back in the channel, that. Uh, that really warm 440 that I built. I actually sold that saw to Caleb. He was uh, he was starting out a tree service, and uh, he really he really wanted a warm 70 cc saw. So I I sold him that saw. That saw is still uh, that's still that saw is still putting trees on the ground. He's very happy with it. And uh, if I can help the guy out, uh, I'm going to. He was looking for a smaller CC saw for his girlfriend Taylor to run, as well as his ground his ground crew. Okay, um, he picked this thing up dirt cheap. It was on sale or something. It was brand new. He picked this thing up for like a couple hundred bucks. Hence the reason why we put the coil and the carb on it. Um, I did some reading on this. That seemed like the mods that other guys were going. So I thought, well, if that's working for other guys, I asked. Uh, Caleb, would you be interested in, in purchasing those parts? We'll see what we can do with this. Okay, so I'm going to go over how we got to here, friends, because you guys want to know. I'm going to try and keep this video shorter, but you guys want to know. So here we go from start to finish. When I first ran this saw, um, I wasn't overly impressed with it. Echo, I like Echoes for what they are. They're very reliable. They're usually reasonably priced. They're just a good running, uh, reliable saw. They're not particularly fast, um, but they are what they are, right? And and I do like Echoes. I like that 670 I ported, the, the first giveaway saw. That's a good running saw. Stock, meh. It, for me, and remember friends, my thoughts of power and, and what a saw should do are, are completely skewed because I pretty much only run ported saws. Stock, that thing with a stock muffler and just stock, it was, it didn't rev very hard, it didn't pull very hard, you know, it was just kind of there. Once I opened up the muffler, you saw I took down a, a, a decent sized box elder with that. Box elders here cut pretty hard. It did the job pretty well. So I thought, okay, with a muffler mod, this thing, has potential. So that one's good. Now, so I ran the saw stock and I spent a lot of time putting a tack on this saw. I wrote down all the numbers because guys were asking me, guys were asking me what kind of RPM are you seeing? Out of the box, Echo says 13.5 on this saw. I could not get this thing anywhere close to 13.5. Uh, I tacked it and tacked it and tacked it. Uh, stock, the highest RPM I ever achieved with the saw was 12.5. Okay, so I don't know, I don't know where Echo got their numbers from, but 12.5, I talked to five or six of you guys out there that own these, and you said the same thing. Mine won't go past 12.3, 12.4, 12.5. So with the high jet turned off, this thing won't go past 12.5. So, um, so right there, this saw doesn't rev particularly high. In the cut, in the cut stock, 8,700 RPM is all this thing would pull. It's a grunty saw out of the box, but it, it just, it, it, it didn't, it didn't pull particularly fast. It did pull hard though, but not fast, okay? So what I ended up doing with this saw is putting the 620 carbon coil on it. Um, the biggest, Benefit was the coil. The carb, it was just okay. Once I put the coil on it, it, it really woke the saw up. This saw was pulling, and I'm looking, um, this saw was pulling like 13.5, okay, once I put the coil on it. So 
And you guys can go back and look at the videos of this saw. Uh, I showed you guys on the tack because I found there was a lot of misinformation out there about what kind of RPM. Uh, guys were saying, well, 13.5, it says on the box. I could not get this thing anywhere near 13.5. I was running this thing with the high jet turned off in a lot of those videos, guys, and it was still, it was still four stroking heavily. So what does that tell you? This saw is an old style saw built so that it could run in the modern world. Echo is trying to get around the emissions that all these manufacturers have to meet without using Auto-Tune or M-Tronic like Still and Husqvarna use and without, um, without putting the extra fresh air ports in, right? Like a lot of these saws have now. So they're trying to do it with ignition timing and carburetors and, and, and port tricks. Okay, so right there, in my opinion, and again, friends, this is just my experience and my opinion. A lot of guys port these and have a lot of success. And uh, I'm just not quite there yet with this saw. I would probably have to do quite a few of these before I got it really down. So once I ran this thing stock, and that's why I did, I really wanted to know, <coughs> excuse me, what I was up against. Well, I was up against quite a few things. The ignition was fighting me and the carb. Once I swapped it, it pulled better RPM. Did a muffler mod. Now, stock, I noted, this saw was spitting back through the carburetor a little bit stock. So, um, I did not touch the intake timing on this saw, okay? Now, where did I go with this saw? Well, and again, I, I write notes on everything, so I can just quickly go back. So I said to myself, I do not want to touch the intake timing on this saw because um, I felt that this saw was over intaked out of the box. And it is, I think, in my opinion. Intake opens at 79 on this saw and closes at 79 or 80. This thing has about 150, 159 intake duration. That is really, really pushing it. That's pushing it for a ported saw. Um, 160 generally is uh, the spot where you start um, going past the point of gains and you'll start getting a saw that's lazy off idle and they can and will spit back through the carburetor. That's a sign you're pulling too much fuel in and I'm gonna show you guys on the cutaway what I think's going on with this saw, okay? I didn't touch the intake timing. All I did to this saw, friends, is increase transfer velocity and raise the exhaust roof. I put the exhaust roof at 104 on this saw. Stock was 114, which again, not only was the ignition and the carburetor fighting us, but the exhaust roof was so low. This saw has the lowest exhaust roof of any saw I've ever timed. I went back, I got notes since I started porting, like this whole book's almost full of notes. I couldn't find a saw with a lower exhaust roof. So again, I figured I'm gonna give this thing a go. So all I did was raise the exhaust roof and make the transfers have more velocity and, and be able to pull more fuel through. Um, when I first ran this saw, friends, I just idled it. I, I blipped it a little, it was really, really rich richer than stock and this thing was very very rich stock and when i put it in the wood this thing wouldn't clean up in the cut unless it was absolutely buried which was frustrating for me because i hate an overly rich saw it bothers me and i i'll tune a saw till it's just crisp i couldn't get the saw to tune right so again for me out of the box this isn't a saw that i would run and and i know a lot of you guys have them this is a good saw for the price. It's well made, it's quality. But for me, um, I don't want a saw that runs rich. For a ground crew in a tree company, that's good because they won't burn this saw. Do you guys get what I'm saying? That's kind of why I wanted to go this route. And I thought it's something different for the channel. Okay. I can't get this saw to clean up. It's, it's, it's running ridiculously rich and it's spitting back through the carb even more now. I got fuel coming out of the muffler. So what does that mean? Well, we just have too much fuel going through this saw. So my original thought, and again, friends, I'm just going step by step what I've done to this saw. 
My original thought was the carburetor. I put an unlimited carb without a semi-high fixed jet like this has off of another echo on this saw a decent sized carb it doesn't run any different okay um it runs a little better but it's still way too rich it's spitting back through the carb i can't get it to tune right a couple weeks ago i i tried something the muffler is getting full of fuel on this so i thought maybe that coil let go so I put the old coil back on. It doesn't run any different, okay? We have good blue hot spark. Again, I'm thinking we're not getting proper spark. That's why this thing's not cleaning up. Doesn't seem to be the case, friends. So um, I actually ran this saw with no muffler, and it runs better. Not good, but better with no muffler. So right there, that's telling me I'm getting too much fuel into the muffler and then it's pulling it back in right we're getting some scavenging well this thing's already too rich and now we're scavenging fuel so right there i think i know what's going on friends i'm going to grab the cutaway i'm going to move this saw let's talk about bore and stroke versus transfer timing versus intake timing this is going to be i've never showed you guys this but this stuff is what you need to be aware of um, I didn't touch the intake on this because I had a feeling that I was already over intaked and I am for sure. I am. Let's talk about this friends. And I'm going to show you guys what's going on with this saw. Or I think I haven't reground it yet because I wanted to cover all the bases. Uh, I will get this saw running. If I can't get it running the way I ported it, I'll have to get another cylinder and I will port it differently next time. I think I know what's wrong. And I think, think I know how to fix it. Okay, I'm going to grab the cutaway. Okay, friends, we have the cutaway here. This is getting, this is more advanced stuff. Um, I haven't shown a lot of this on my channel. The farther you go down the two-stroke rabbit hole, the farther you go down the rabbit hole. These engines, there's a lot going on. They are simple, but they are not simple, if, if you guys get what I'm saying. These engines are interesting creatures because you're doing everything in one stroke up and one stroke down everything affects everything else in these saws combustion chamber size exhaust port roof case capacity intake timing transfer size and shape blow down and that's the distance from here where the exhaust opens to when your transfers open right here's your transfers okay these are very interesting I've been thinking about maybe going further into this in another porting series. Um, okay, friends. Now, I quickly wrote down the dimensions for this saw. The Echo has a 45 millimeter bore and a 37 and a half millimeter stroke. What does that mean? Well, I'll put it to you this way. A Husqvarna of the same size, like a, let's go with... I'm not going to go with a stratified engine like a 562 because that's totally different. Let's go with a Johnson Red 630 Super. <clears throat> that has a 34 millimeter stroke and a 50 or 48 millimeter bore. Okay. Short stroke, larger bore. Okay. Less pump. Remember, your pump is when your piston's going down, you're squeezing the intake charge. Okay, that's what creates your pump. If you have a shorter stroke, you're pumping less. That's why when you get into big bore, short stroke, you're going to have a harder time making power on the top because you don't have as much pump. Right? That's why transfer timing, and again, a lot of guys that say, no, I, I'm not, I don't believe that. And, and, and that's okay, friends. I, again, I'll, I don't or, I don't argue porting theory. This is just what I think. It's just an educated guess. The less pump you have, the more transfer timing is more important when you let the bottom end charge through the transfers and into the top, okay? So think, if you have a 50 millimeter bore and a 34 millimeter stroke, you have less pump. Meaning, you can have more intake because you're squeezing the intake charge less. As the intake charge is coming in, right? And you start, the minute that intake shuts off, you can't 
your your incoming pressure cannot be less than your bottom end pressure. Okay. If your bottom end pressure, because you've drawn so much fuel and air in, if it exceeds the incoming pressure through the carburetor, what happens? As this starts to squeeze and stifle off your intake charge, if at any point from here to here, this exceeds this, what happens? You get spit back through the carburetor, okay? That's why you don't want to over intake your saws. That's super, super important. If you ever do that, you will get a saw that runs pig rich, just like the 590 is, and is spitting back through the carb. You can have a wet air filter. Well, as it spits back and gets your air box and air filter wet, it exacerbates the problem. And as the saw runs longer, it will run richer and richer and richer. Why? That new air that's coming in, instead of just mixing fuel through your carburetor, because the carburetor mixes fuel with fresh air, you're mixing fuel through your air filter with the air coming in. So that air is already carrying a fuel charge. And then you are mixing more fuel charge into the carburetor. Okay. So it's a serious problem. And uh, I want to talk about it today. Okay. So think about it. The echo has a 37 and a half millimeter stroke. It's a stroker. Okay. So it has the ability to draw more air in and squish it more because the stroke is physically longer. This is how I look at this. So I think what's happening now, we didn't change the intake timing. So you got to ask yourself how, how did I possibly over intake a saw when I didn't change the intake timing? And I didn't friends because studying the motor and the internals, I foresaw a problem with intake timing and it already kind of spit back a little bit stock and I've talked to a few other guys and they say yeah they they can do that and they do so this is my thought because I hogged out the lower transfers which 90 uh, every saw I've ever done that only helps because I hogged out the lower transfers um, I now have a higher case volume and when you have a, it's like putting bigger tires on your truck. If you have a bigger tire on your truck at the same air pressure, you will get greater force pushing out, right? Does, does that make sense? Cause you have the same pounds per square inch when you have more of them will potentially push back with a greater force or have the ability to. And again, this is just how my brain works. I hope you guys are understanding what I'm saying. So we have a higher case volume, which will give us more top end power where the saw is running. We have a higher exhaust roof, right? We raised that exhaust quite a bit on that saw because I wanted to get it running with modern saws, cutting at 10, 10 and a half in the cut, not at nine or 85 like it was. So we have higher RPM, which means more fuel and air going in. We have bigger transfers, which means a higher case volume. But here's the main thing with that echo friends. And I'm going to grab my marker here. I'm just going to draw you guys something with this echo. You guys want to know. So here it is. This is what the echo transfers look like. Okay. You have a primary transfer and a secondary transfer. Okay. This is looking at them. You guys have seen, right? There's that like cutout in there. Okay. Now, typically a primary should be bigger than a secondary, right? And a lot of times the primary will open first. Okay. Now the primary in the saw opens the same as the secondary, but here's the thing, friends, when you look at the upper transfers, the primary is about this big and the secondary is like this. Okay. Now we have from if the exhaust port is up here, we have 25 degrees of blowdown of BD, right? Now, stock, stock, this saw had 15 degrees of blowdown, which told me something, but I wanted to see, will this saw run 
at 25 degrees of blowdown because that should make it a monster on top, cut faster, and just be an angry saw. Caleb likes a really angry saw that's fast. Um, he likes what I build, and uh, he I wanted to try and build a similar saw, but in a small groundman saw. So, so here's my thoughts, friends. Most guys I know that port these, they they widened the exhaust and really didn't raise it much. Okay, they did not change the blowdown. I changed the blowdown substantially because I raised the exhaust ten degrees. So my hypothesis, friends, is to take to take this transfer. I want to widen it. I want to get it stifles down here at the top of the primary quite a bit. Now I didn't change that much, but I gave it more taper to try and match these two. What I'm going to try and do, friends, when I have a moment, I'm going to go back into the saw. I'm going to raise these primaries i'm not sure the amount yet i may go five i may go ten okay i'm going to raise the primary transfer so that we have less blowdown and i'm going to try and make it as big as possible and i'm going to try and go in here and actually lessen the taper of the lower transfer the opening for these echoes is about that big okay there's my finger in a husqvarna it would be like this okay or whatever a still okay so I think what's actually happening and again we'll go back to the cutaway I think what's actually happening friends is because the transfers in the bottom are so big now and the upper transfer the primary one where you get most of your of your fuel coming out I think because it's so tiny um, the pressure is not, generally when the transfers open, especially if you have a long blowdown saw, you get a lot of pressure coming out of here. And when we port, we port for velocity, a lot of us, okay? I think what's happening, I'm not getting enough velocity out of the upper transfer because it's too small. This is my hypothesis. I didn't want to go grinding on the saw till I ruled out mechanical issues. Well, I've put... Three carbs and two coils on there and it runs the same. So I put a new impulse line and a new fuel line. It runs the same. So that's my thoughts, friends. Okay, friends. You guys wanted to know? That's what's going on. Um, I will not update this project until I'm sure I got it solved. Um, a lot of times when you're experimenting and tweaking, it doesn't make for a very exciting video. So... I just wanted to let you guys know what's going on. I got flooded, flooded with questions. Um, that's the way it goes sometimes. I liked, basically friends, a lot of the saws I do on this channel, I've never touched before. And I do that on purpose because we can all learn together. If there's problems, we can learn. If there's no problems, we can learn that what I did worked. If there's problems like on this Echo, can we work around them? It's just a saw and just a cylinder. If I need, if I have to get another cylinder, I will. It's, it, it is the way it is, right? And uh, these are the breaks. Remember, this has always been the channel of learning. It's not about, look what the Tin Man can do. I'm just a fellow working in my shop, like a lot of you guys are out there. I learn from you guys all the time through emails. You guys, <laughs> that's the thing, friends. You guys know so much about saws, it's incredible, and a lot of you, if I have a little issue, or I don't know uh, a part number, or whatever, or where to get a part, all of a sudden I get an email, and it could be somebody from anywhere in the world saying, hey, I know the part number, or this part will work for that, or even timing numbers, or hey, I noticed you did this, if that doesn't work, here's what I've done, and uh, I just want to thank you guys, there's a lot of good folks out there. And I'm constantly learning. I've never touched one of these Echoes before. I know they're a popular farm and ranch saw, so I thought I'll do one. Um, I don't typically run small displacement saws or farm and ranch saws. I get asked that all the time. Why? Because my world starts at 60 cc's. Um, to me... I mean, I ran that 44. I love that saw. That saw weighs, in my hands, it feels like it weighs seven or eight pounds. It weighs nothing. If I'm having a sore back day or whatever, and I got a light job to do, 
that's the saw I'm going to grab from now on. I mean, um, it cuts well above its class. But otherwise, friends, I mean, the smallest saw you really see me run on this channel is that 562. Well, I think those weigh around 12-ish pounds, depending on whose scale. And, and, and again, guys online argue about weights all the time. But to me, it's not just about how heavy a saw is, how it carries its weight. That 562 that's behind me, that will rock and roll in most wood with most older 70cc saws and weighs two or three pounds lighter on my scale. So um, it's hard to argue with that. But realistically, friends, when I go cutting, I'm not cutting for eight hours. I'll cut for four or five hours. The amount of production I can get out of a ported 70, 65cc saw in that area is incredible that uh, that 461 that's hanging up over there i love that saw that's more saw than i need but i ported it to be really fast and pull a long bar i can stand up and buck with that i can fill my truck with that thing right now and uh that's the important thing for me i want speed so that i'm not cutting all day um i'm not a cutter by profession i do do physical labor every day but uh there's different kind of muscles involved in what I do and cutting. I want to get the job done in two hours, fill my truck and drive home. And uh, to me, there is no 50cc saw that I could port that is going to pull a 32 inch bar so I can stand up and, and cut any wood that I come across. Not to say that you don't need a 50cc saw. If you're on a 50cc saw and that works for you, I'm good with that. But to turn a 50cc saw up hot enough to be able to pull even a 24 inch bar with authority, you're really going to have to make that thing scream. It's not going to have the torque and it's not going to last. So um, I had many O26 and MS260s back in the day. I really like those saws. But again, I started porting those saws because that's what I had. They don't last when you turn them right up. So... Um, to me, the party starts 60, 65 cc. So, um, not that I wouldn't run this Echo, but to me, if I'm grabbing a 13 or 14 pound saw, I'm going to grab my 044. Uh, that 461 is fairly light. Uh, I really, uh, I mean, any of my ported 266s, uh, those are run a 28, 32, no problem. They're light. Decent anti-vibe, not the best, but it's like they pull chain like it's going out of style. So um, I, I think there's often a lot of questions about, well, why don't you run smaller saws? I'm just, I'm not really there in my, in my saw journey. I started out with smaller saws and I've gotten bigger and bigger. The inverse of that, friends, is you won't often see me running a 90cc saw or an 80cc saw because I don't have that kind of wood here. Those get too heavy and I don't need the horsepower where, uh, you know, like Bucking, often he's running a 125. Why? Because he's cutting a four foot log or where in my world, we don't have wood that size here. And if we do, it's not often I'm going to cut it. So um, pick the size for the wood you're cutting. If you're cutting small wood all the time, by all means, a 50 cc saw is, is going to be what you need, right? But um I'm often cutting 18 to 24 inch poplar, not the hardest cutting wood, but uh, if I'm going to pull a longer bar, I want to pull it with authority. So anyhow, friends, that's the echo. When I figure it out, I will let you guys know. I think it's a long bore or a small bore, long stroke issue. I think I've talked to a few other guys. We've kind of put our heads together. I think that's what's going on. I think I'm going to retime this saw and really do some work to the upper transfers and see if I get the saw to clean up. Anyhow, friends, as always, thanks for watching. Take her easy. I'll let you guys know when the echo's fixed. I can't tell you until I know more, and that's what I know. Um, it is what it is, and we'll figure it out, friends. Later.